So we have one more major area we'd like to cover in the time remaining, and that is preparing our learning environment. You know, uh, if you're going to paint a room, uh, you undertake a lot of preparation uh, ahead of time. You need to, to scrape and spackle and sand and wash and put down tarps and tape all the edges. And You know, the same thing is true when we teach. When we're going to begin teaching a lesson, we need to take a look at the space that we're going to be teaching in and prepare it, get it ready for what it is that's about to take place so that when people enter a space, it speaks to them. It says, I've been expecting you, I've been waiting for you, I'm excited to have you here. Uh, we're going to encounter Jesus here tonight. This is going to be a special encounter. This is going to be something prayerful taking place. Uh, so we need to get into the mindset of preparing our learning environment. So let me quickly go over some things that we can do. First thing I'd recommend is to make sure you can get there early uh, to organize and clean up and make a neat space. You know, I really believe that neatness is next to godliness. So uh, if you have a neat space, it's going to provide a calming effect and it's going to help to uh, keep people focused on uh, what they're doing and learning. Uh, try to provide a welcoming and a functional seating arrangement. So you may need to, to move the tables and chairs uh, in your room, if you're teaching in a Catholic school room, be sure to put it back uh, the way you found it because there's a teacher who's coming in the next day and has that room arranged uh, for a reason. But it's good to try to get it out of the classroom atmosphere and try to turn it into an atmosphere of sharing and, and uh, prayer and, uh, and faith sharing. Uh, provide name tags or name tents. This is a good way of uh, providing order especially on the first uh, few weeks when you don't know their names. Uh, it expresses that you're in control, you've prepared. It expresses that you intend to, to get to know them, that they are truly people in your room and not just a number, and that they're very important. And then as well, uh, prepare a, a prayer center. Um, perhaps the single most important thing that you can do, uh, a little table that creates a climate of prayer, uh, that has a cloth on it with the color of the liturgical year, a Bible, a crucifix, or an icon, uh, maybe a little bowl of holy water or a candle. Uh, it really is a powerful way of uh, establishing a prayerful environment. Um, a few more. If you have the opportunity to put up some uh, posters, uh, pictures and sacred objects because uh, as Catholics we learn beyond words. We are a very visual faith and so take advantage of uh, using posters and pictures to teach as well. Uh, try to get there early and prepare the, the chalkboard or an easel or if you have a wipe off board, an overhead projector, anything you can do to get there ahead of time and prepare and have some things ready so that when your students come in, they're going to see that you have a plan for the, for the session. Uh, we talked about this before. Make sure you have your supplies organized. Uh, and this is a great way of just keeping order and, and making sure that you're relaxed as the uh, session is going on. Uh, if you're going to use technology, get there early to make sure you know how to use it and that it's plugged in properly and that it's working. Do a test run. Always do a test run on the technology that you are using. And then we alluded to this before, but please straighten up before you're, you're leaving. Uh, we need to be good stewards of the um, spaces that we're using, and it's respectful to put them back into the proper order for the person who's going to use it next. Uh, very quickly, I want to show you a, a picture of a before and after the, the classroom that I teach in. This is actually a science room that I teach class in. And when I come in, this is how it looks. And then after about 15 minutes, uh, I have it transformed into this little faith sharing space, uh, doing some of the very things that I just described. Uh, so it's very doable. I only have 15 minutes to do that in because there's a class in there before me. And uh, so we're not talking about, you know, uh, building a, a church or anything. We just want you to arrange a nice little prayerful space. 
so that's a little bit about planning the learning environment. I, I think we have time for uh, a question, maybe two, but definitely one. So Nick, what do you got? We have one from Laura. Laura wants to know if you have any suggestions on behavior, incentives, motivator ideas for catechists to use with their students. That's an interesting question, Laura. And, and uh, one thing that comes to mind is that you know some teachers like to use rewards, while others are totally against that. Uh, but you know you, you may want to think about different ways that you can motivate students by rewarding them uh, for proper behavior, for good answers, and so on. You know, without going over the top on that, you don't want to be you know handing out candy every time they give an answer of some kind. But I think a good way of motivating students is to interact with them and verbally be telling them when they give an answer that that's a good answer. Uh, thanks for sharing that. You know, affirm them and let them know that what they're sharing is something that is, is very helpful and something that you appreciate and want more of. And that's something that may encourage others to, to do the same. We'll be doing part two of Getting Started as a Catechist. We're going to take a look at some more basic catechist skills, such as how to lead others in prayer, how to handle discipline, how to polish your teaching technique, as well as 10 simple things that you can do right now to make yourself a more effective catechist. Uh, and you can register for that by going to my blog and uh, registering uh, right now so that we can see you again in two weeks. Now, uh, we've accomplished a lot tonight. We've looked at the role of the catechist. We've talked about planning and preparation, uh, explored various learning activities, as well as preparing the learning environment. Uh, I also told you that uh, you could download a PDF of 11 Tips for Lesson Planning. You can do that by visiting my blog right now. You see it on your screen, www.catechistjourney.com and you can download that PDF to uh, review and get some new ideas about tips for lesson planning. And I'd like to thank uh, Nick Yanto and Carrie Fryer for their assistance, and to all the people at Loyola Press for making this webinar possible, and, of course, to all of you for participating. And let's conclude tonight by offering praise to God in prayer. As we pray together, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you, and good night.